Welcome again guys. Welcome to another session of biology with math problems from Shomu's biology and in this uh, video tutorial we'll be talking about the problem regarding uh, the restriction mapping. You know restriction map uh, is uh, one of the very important and interesting part of our study for molecular biologists. So sometimes you need to solve those problems in many different competitive exams. So let's begin with uh, solving uh, this restriction map problem. So, we will be solving two different restriction map problems. Now, in this video, we will be starting with the basics of how to solve restriction map problems. So, let us talk about it. So, let me take a color here. Okay. So, two freshman college students interested in becoming gene jocks perform the following set of restriction digests on a newly isolated plasmid which is termed as PBLA230. The reactions they carried out along with the fragment obtained in a single and double digest reactions were given here and this is how they provide you uh, the input data to solve this uh, restriction map problem. Now this is uh, again a mapping problem right so a map so what do you need to create you need to provide the structure of all those genes placed that means the placement of the map that means the, the regions of the cutting site of HPA Hindi 3 in this case. They might give you a two, they can give you more than two. You know, more than two restriction enzyme uh, reactions are very much complicated to calculate by, uh, you know, human mind. Uh, it takes a lot more time to do that. So, if, if it, so, majorly, most of the time, they will provide you uh, two different restriction enzymes and the combinatory effect of two. Uh, and they ask you to construct the map of those restriction cleavage site. So, in this case, we need to create this map that is a circular plasmid and we need to notify the regions where HPA cut and the Hindi 3 cut occurs. So, let us see here. So, let us draw the circle here, but before going into the detail. So, this is the first thing that you should do to draw this, this cycle or circle here. Once you draw this circle, this is the beginning. So, this is uh, going to be the map. Now, remember certain important factors. So, we only require this data. So, let us focus on them. So, what we need to have here, we can look for uh, the, the different lengths of the fragment that we get. And the very first thing in all this process is to identify the total, the total length, total length of the plasmid. That thing is very, very important. Once you understand that, rest of the thing becomes super easy. So, in this case, we will we'll find that, that that thing here in this case is you know 26 kb because you know HPA1 cuts only at one single position in this plasmid and it give rise to 26 kb long fragment. So, that means we have all total of 26 kb of this plasmid. So, the plasmid is itself 26 kb long. So, we find that out in this case, this is 26 kb here. Okay. Now, the second step, the second step is here to put this value for that one. You know, in problems where they give you one enzyme which only cuts and produce one particular fragment, this is a very easy because you then know where is the, what is the cut site for that. So, what we know here, we know that HPA, so let us put HPA in any one of this place, H P A 1 and we know once H P A 1 cuts it, the plasmid becomes linear fragment of 26 kb. Okay. In second place, if it, it is cut with Hindi 3, right, we get 13, 6, 4 and 3 kb fragments. Now, if we treat it with HPA and Hindi 3, we get another 4. Now, the second thing, so second part that we have done here is to place first enzyme cut site, right. And as you have placed here, that is HPA1. Now, what when to know that which is going to be placed? Now, we need to find that enzyme which is have only one cut site. We place it, place it there, right? So, you place it. So, this is the second step. Now, the third step this is the most vital step. Remember, I make a star here. It is the most vital step here. And this one is to to put the values, you know, to compare the values between them two. That means, this is the Hindi 3, we have maximum cut and we have HP Hindi 3, also many different cut and it is a general idea that if we use two restriction enzymes, we end up with more fragments than one, right. So, here in this case, 
if we compare them try to find out the common the common fragment lengths if you find the common and uncommon fragment length it will be very very easy for us to calculate if we look at here what we'll find that we have 3 which is also common in hindi 3 and hindi 3 hpo1 so we simply know that this 3 kb <coughs> fragment that is generated in this scenario is due to the cleavage of hindi 3 right 4 it is also present in hindi 3 and in the both combination that means this 4 kb fragment is also generated due to the cut of hindi 3 not in the presence of hpa so hpa does not influence the cleavage of this 4 and 3 kb fragments and again it is true for this 6 right but what about this 13 as you can see here hindi 3 have one 13 kb length fragment which is not present here if we treat it with hindi 3 and hpa1 was what that does mean you know that means you have a 13 kb fragment if we only treat it with hindi 3 but if now we treat it with hindi 3 and hpa1 somehow this fragment is smaller either 7 or 6 now what idea we can get from it so previously if we cut it only with hindi 3 we end up with a 13 kb long fragment now if we cut it with hindi 3 and hpa and hpa both we end up with 1716 so simply if we cut this 13 kb fragment we get 17 and 16 kb so that is the idea that we require to obtain so this is the third step comparing the outcome comparing the outcomes of of the uh, of the double comparing the outcomes of the double uh, cut and the single cut with maximum fragments remember this step so these are the three stages that we are going to follow now according to this so what we can get now what what idea we can obtain from here we can uh, uh, obtain the idea that you know we have 13 kb if we treat it only, only with hindi 3 so and so but but if you use it with hpa and hindi 3 we will get 7 and 6 and we also know that hpa only cuts one so that means there are no other hpa cut side there but still hpa cuts somewhere middle of this 13 kb fragment which is cut by hindi 3 so we can write it like this isn't it hindi 3 and again another hindi 3 here isn't it so let's assume he, this is 7 this is 6 that means total fragment if we only cut with hindi 3 forget about this hp here we will get 7 plus 6 a 13 kb fragment that is this one if we cut with hindi 3 and hpa we get 1716 and that is completely justified here so what remains is a 4 kb and a 3 kb fragment so let's put the values here now right a 4 kb and a 3 kb fragment so if we put this 4 kb and what what else we know that with the hindi 3 we get 113 kb we get the 13 kb 7 and 6 13 kb we get 16 kb and 4 and 3 so let's place it place it here so let's place it a 6 kb fragment so this is hindi 3 cut and one 4 kb fragment this is 4 this is another hindi 3 site and last one is a 3 kb fragment so if you look at here after constructing it the last step of this process is to check whether everything is according to uh, the the data they provided or not so now what we know hindi 3 cuts it here 1 7 and 6 so completely 13 13 then hindi 3 cut 6 6 we get hindi 3 to hindi 3 4 4 and hindi 3 to hindi 3 3 so we get four different units 13 6 4 and 3 so four different uh, bands that we can obtain and they are cut due to hindi 3 there right and after that if we look at here only with hpa1 we get only one cut of 26 kb right and at the end we have hpa1 and hindi 3 
And if we cut it with HPA1 and Hindi 3, let us find it, we get 1, 7, 1, 6, 1, 6, so 2, 6, so 1, 7, 2, 6, 4 and 3, so this 7, 6, 4 and 3. But remember, here there is only 1, 6 that is mentioned here in this segment. Why is that? Because remember, 6 kb is the length. So, if we run it into the agarose gel, we are going to get one band only for the 6 kb, right? If we have 30 different fragment with 6 kb length, we are going to get only one band. Because in agarose gel, we get band depending upon the length of and the base pairs, or that is the basis of the DNA, right? So, we won't get no, 30 bands, we get only one band if all the bands are 6 kb, right? That is very very important idea to notice and if we forget that that these two 6 are, are kind of wrong here, it is not wrong because we are going to end up in the same region of the band in the agarose gel and that is the true thing here and we can get it from, uh, we can get the idea here. So, this is the 6 kb band, the band might be slightly bold than other bands because there are two 6 kb uh, uh, band, uh, I mean uh, plasmid uh, fragments are there but we get only one band. So, that is the rule of how to solve this type of restriction fragment problem. Remember, so total length calculation is very, very important. Then place the first enzyme cut site if that is having only one cut or if it is having the lowest number of fragment. Then compare the outcome of the double cut fragment with the lowest, with the highest uh, fragment generating enzyme and then to find out the idea of how the genes, uh, I mean how the regions are placed there, right. So, this is not a gene mapping, but remember this mapping is important enough because for, for many different experimental purposes we require to generate the plasmid map because except knowing a plasmid map with uh, you know restriction enzyme map, we cannot actually clone anything because we need to know where we need to cut, where we need to insert our required DNA and where uh, we need to cleave it and doing all the stuffs. Right. So, so finally, let us put the end part here that is the name of the plasmid that is that is how you need to solve it P B L A 230 that is how you need to write the whole picture, you need to draw the whole picture, you need to put the name of it uh, P B L A 230 and remember uh, you should place all the name of uh, the enzymes outside the circle. And in this case we need to I need to put it inside the circle because I do not have uh, the place there in. Uh, but you need to place it there, right. So, that is it guys, it is very easy, but you need to go sequentially like all the other gene mapping problems. So, that is it and I hope that is helpful. Thank you.